Hey everybody. Is this the most powerful Air Force Texan in the world? Hell, it might be one of the most powerful air shooting air guns on the planet today. Stay tuned to this review and find out just how powerful it is. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in uh, this week to the Colorado Air Gun Enthusiast. I am going to go over and review this Texan 45 caliber African Air Ordnance 45 2020 Moab 4500 PSI upgrade kit. That's a mouthful, as I like to call it, the 457 Ultra Mag. All right, let's get into this thing and let you know uh, what it's all about. So, obviously, I have to start with a standard Texan in 45 caliber. And once you've got that, you need two parts you need the valve. And the valve body it's one piece uh, and you need a magnum hammer spring for this thing both of those you can get from either lethal air here in the states or you can go directly through african air ordinance out of south africa now once you've got your gun you've got your valve you've got your spring you do have to go into it and take your stock spring out of your texan you know depending on how well you know the inside of this gun it can take you from 20 30 minutes to an hour to get in there and change that spring out it's not a big deal it's pretty easy i even did it um there's a couple of good videos out there mr hollow point's got one and jeremy from african air ordinance has one on his youtube channel as well so you go in you change the spring you pop this valve in exactly like you do your normal texan Loosen the grub screw, put it in, tighten the collar, tighten the grub screw. It's super simple. And then you're ready to go. I did throw a couple of extras on here. Just, uh, I put a carbon fiber bottle as opposed to the metal one. It does come with the metal bottle, but that 4,500 PSI metal bottle is heavy and is gonna add with the valve probably close to two pounds to your Texan with the carbon fiber bottle. Um, I opted to go with the carbon fiber just to keep the weight down a little bit. I threw a muzzle brake on it. This is from African Air Ordnance. This is their uh, barrel adapter. You just slide that on, tighten down the lock screws. It's threaded on the end, so that allows you to switch from having a muzzle brake to being able to throw a Donny FL Emperor on there or the Air Beast from African Air Ordnance. Uh, has one that's really nice as well. Uh, I saw a couple days ago that Donnie FL is also making this threaded uh, slip-on barrel end cap so that you can just easily interchange muzzle brakes, suppressors. You can pop both off all together and not have anything on there. I like it. It does seem to calm the gun down a little bit, reduce the recoil, especially when I'm shooting through the, the scope with the shot cam. I like to just have that on there and it gives me a little more time to get back on the shot and see the impact. So once you got that all set up, this thing's ready to go. What can you expect out of this? Uh, you know, I mentioned, is this the most powerful 45 caliber out there? As far as I know, it is. And there's a couple other big ones out there, Extreme Big Bore, Bush Buck, um, you know, and these things are doing six, even 700 foot pounds. This thing is advertised to do 944 foot pounds. I mean, that is a beast of an air gun. It, it, it could be the most powerful production air gun in the entire world. It's more powerful than the 50 pile driver. It's more powerful than the Texan in 50. It's way more powerful than the hammer. So even in 45 caliber, this thing is powerful. You know, having said that, you do have to fill it to, you know, they say 4,500 PSI. The tank is actually only rated for 4350. My personal preference is I just fill it to 4400. That's such a small amount over. I'm not worried about it, but it's under the 4500. So I like to be in there. So if I have some temperature variance throughout the day and it gets hotter, my pressure is not hopefully going to go above 4500. If it gets colder, hopefully I'm not dealing with uh, a denser air situation and going to get into some kind of valve lock situation or something like that. So I just keep it at 4,400. That's where I'm going to do all the testing on the ranges at 4,400. And at that PSI, you know, the advertised numbers is a 350 gram bullet going 1,050 feet per second and doing about 840 foot pounds of energy. Um, the advertised power with the 520 grain solid is that staggering 944 foot pound number. Now, 
I don't really like to go off maximum numbers. I don't personally hunt with a 520 grain solid. For me, I like to be somewhere in that 350 to 450 grain range, depending on whether I'm going for something smaller, like an antelope or a whitetail, or whether I'm going something for something a lot bigger, like an elk or a mule deer. I'll kind of tailor my bullet to that, but I like to be in that 350 to 450 grain range. And that's where I'm really interested is what is it going to do? It should do somewhere between 840 and 880 with that size bullet, which is, is pretty phenomenal. And I'm guessing shooting something like a 350 grain uh, hollow point from Nielsen is going to scream in this thing. It got a great ballistic coefficient. And then I, I want to see what it's doing with some Mr. Hollow Point 350s, 385s, maybe some 415s and see what kind of numbers I can get out of it with that. I'll go over a couple pros and cons with you real quick. I mean, the pros are easy. This thing is a powerhouse beast. It's gonna put maximum foot pounds down range on your animals. And you know, what that really means is that it's also shooting flatter. If you got the same bullet weight versus another gun that's going 100, 150 feet per second slower, I mean, you're obviously shooting flatter, so. I mean, your two big pluses are, are power and trajectory. All right, what are the cons of this gun? Your biggest con of this gun is gonna be air. Uh, at 4,400 PSI, even if you can get your tanks to 4,500 PSI, you've got your own compressor or something, you're still hogging air with this thing. I mean, it, it, it is a, a hog, it is selfish on air. You'll spend a lot of time filling it. If you only have one tank, I mean, honestly, I'd have to say probably stay away from these, this gun and a couple of the others out there that are those 300 bar fills. They're, they're just incredibly horrible on air consumption and you're gonna spend more time driving back and forth filling your tank. If you've got a compressor or at least a couple tanks, you know, you might be able to get into something like this and do all right as long as you're out th not out there plinking all day or just pounding steel you know, you're gonna be able to have enough air to get out there and sight it in and know you're all right going out on your hunt or your shoot, whatever you're doing. The second one, it does increase the weight, especially if you have the, the metal bottle, you're gonna increase it a couple of pounds over your standard Texan with a carbon fiber bottle and a TX2 valve. That's why I went with the carbon fiber. So you are gonna have a little bit of weight. It also is gonna add length to the overall gun but it's gonna do it all in the back half of the gun. So from the frame back where that valve seats to the back of the frame on this gun, 13 inches. So 13 inches definitely lengthens it up. I'm gonna compare it to uh, this Texan right here. Now this is a carbine, but the valve body, the bottle, butt plate, everything on the back half of the gun's the same, irregardless of how long your barrel is and whether you have a shroud or not. So measuring this one, let's call it 10 and a quarter. Um, you know, you're adding almost three inches of pull to your gun. Luckily, it's not a real big deal with the Texan. You've got this rail with infinite adjustability. So this one with a really short pull, I've got my scope way ahead of that. And then this one with the long pull, you know, I've obviously got it back behind there a little bit. It doesn't, it doesn't feel uncomfortable. Um, you know, you get used to it. The pull might be a little longer to your trigger, but with that adjustability, you're going to be able to keep your eye relief the same. You, you might be a little further back on the back of the gun, but slide that eye relief back. Not a big deal. The, the third con against this gun is it, it is more expensive. You have to purchase the Texan first. Um, one good thing is you can just get a standard Texan with a metal bottle and a 3000 PSI fill and save a little money there. You don't have to buy that one. And I think you're like $1,100 in on a Texan. The cost of the valve is 500. The spring is like 40. Actually, it's like 45 for the valve. And he'll take 30 bucks off roughly if you want to apply that towards getting into the carbon fiber bottle. So if you want to do it as cheap as possible, you got $1,100 Texan, throw 500 bucks on it. Now you're looking at like a $1,600, $1,650 gun. You want to go with the bottle and the muzzle brake and the adapter now you're looking at probably 1850 1900 bucks for this gun so it is going to cost you a little more to get into 
So like I said, this is for the power hungry guys that want the most powerful thing they can get their hands on and don't mind the air consumption, don't mind paying a little more for it, and you can get into this bad boy. So that's how we've got it set up today. We're going to get this thing out to the range. We're going to shoot it uh, over the crony and we're going to shoot for some groups with a few different weight bullets and see if this thing does indeed live up to the hype. So I'll see you guys at the range. Hey guys, what's up? We're out here on the range now. We're going to shoot the uh, Air Force Texan in the African Air Ordnance 4500 PSI upgrade. We're going to get some numbers on some varying weight bullets and see, you know, how flat this thing's shooting, what kind of power it's doing. Um, we're out here at the range today on the Pawnee grasslands. You can kind of see this place is just endless prairie skyline. I mean, it's beautiful. I'd got the setup right here. Got the Texan African Air Ordnance upgrade. There's that beautiful BDX scope. And we got it tethered today. Got it, got it running at 4,400 PSI off the regulator. One thing I mentioned when I was inside talking about this gun is that it's an air hog. I mean, here's an example of it. I have a compressor, I have multiple tanks, so air's not a big deal to me, but I filled this tank to almost 5,000 on the compressor and it's dropped, you know, it cooled down to about 47, 48 in the house. It's at 4,600 PSI right now. So I've got it tethered. I've got this running at 4,400 PSI. So, you know, talking about the air consumption, how many shots am I gonna get between 4,600 and 4,350 when I'm not getting my true first shot numbers anymore? So that's what I'm talking about with these 300 bar fill guns. You better have a lot of air. Luckily, I got another tank sitting in here. I got a compressor right here. I got a generator right here. So if I run out, I can just take the time and fill a tank. But, you know, like I said, that's one of the bigger cons of this gun. Let's throw some bullets through it. We're going to start really light around 220. We're going to work our way all the way up to 530. We're going to crony this thing. I've got the... Where is it? There it is. Got the FX crony on there. Forgot rubber bands, had to zip tie it. All right, man, well, let's uh, let's get shooting and see what this bad boy can do. All right, Nick Nielsen, 254. Ten thirty-seven. So now we got the Nick Nielsen 279 grain hollow point. This is the cut base. So the 279 is going faster. We almost got Within about, I think, 30 feet per second of that bullet being supersonic. Let's try one more. Nick Nielsen, 250. Ten sixty nine. Let's throw one more of those through there and see what you, what we get out of it. Eleven thirteen and eleven oh nine. I mean, 
that is just screaming, screaming. Base going 1109 and 1111. I'll have to weigh this when I get home, but it's one of the lighter versions. I mean, 1100 feet per second, over 1100 feet per second. That's almost supersonic. That is absolutely crazy. The group didn't look that good. And that's one thing I've found with this gun is the lighter stuff, it tends to spray and not be as consistent. And the heavier stuff, it just really settles down in there. So we'll move up in weight here. We're gonna go with the 290. See how fast this 290 will go. One thousand nine feet per second with the 290. We'll do one more, just for good measure. All right, one more with the 290. One thousand twenty-one. Just doing it old school, shooting it over it, trying not to shoot it. All right, see what we got there. Oh, uh, what do we got? Nine fifty-two. We got nine fifty-two and ten thirteen. Now. Just realized I am dropping pressure. So I'm shooting right now at about 40 to 50. I'll get a fresh tank on there. Let's get one more through here, see what this thing's doing. There's that hard to cock. I don't know if you can see that. But All right, what do we got? 963. So we we're at 1013, got down to 963. I'm gonna put a fresh tank on there and see what we can do. All right, let's try another 490, see what this thing does. Boy, you can just hear that screaming. 938 with a 490 grain bullet. So I'll just do a quick calculation. Not, yes, velocity 940, weight 490, 961 foot pounds. I mean, that's almost a thousand foot pounds. That 490, holy crap. I mean, if you're one of the guys that just wants more this is more, this is the most. I don't, I don't know how you get 961.2. I mean, and just to be a stickler, cause I know that said 938, a 490 grain slug, 957 foot pounds of energy on a 40, you know what? That creeped up a little on me. That's at 4,500. That's just right there at 4,500. I'm gonna decrease it just a little bit. Wow, that's absolutely insane. So just shot that 490 grain at 938 feet per second for 957.2 foot pounds. We broke 950, 950. So just to put it into perspective, the hot new guns right now, being the pile driver, I've seen it do 820 with a big bullet in, in real life. And I've seen the Texan with the carbon fiber TX2 do a little over 800 as well, right in there, 8, 815, 820 with a really big slug. Those are like 520, 530 grain slugs. That's a 490. That thing is a beast. 
490 grain bullet doing 950 foot pounds and a 350 grain bullet doing uh, 816 foot pounds. So we're over 800 on this thing, even with a light bullet. I consider 350 kind of light. It's kind of in the middle. It was doing 11, 15 feet per second with the uh, 240. I think if I threw the 220 in it, if that isn't the 220, I think it could be really close to, to supersonic. I haven't had a lot of luck with the lighter ones on the bullets. I haven't really got into shooting groups with this thing yet, but uh, I just wanted to get some numbers down and show you guys what kind of power this could produce in real life. This is just one off the shelf I bought from Jeremy at African Air Ordnance. You can buy one of these, hook it up to your gun, and be doing 950 foot-pounds of energy. Now, I'm not going to hunt with a 490 grain solid, but that 350, you know, I, I, I think that's a really good one. It's shooting fast, over 1,000 feet per second. I think it was 1,025, something like that super flat super high ballistic coefficient not the biggest hollow point out there so i'll shoot uh for groups with probably the 385 the 350 maybe this 415 and then i might try like a 460 or something let's shoot it for some groups let's see how, how it shoots these bullets i've still got 4500 in the tank so we can get a few groups at least for accuracy we won't be dead nuts on the power but you know we just wanted to see what this thing can actually do in the field in your hands and in my hands and it... all right here we go 150 yards two in a row <laughs> and here we go 200 yard shot bdx <laughs> Hey, thanks for tuning in this week to Colorado Air Gun Enthusiasts. Hopefully you liked what you saw, you got something out of it. If so, and you want to see more content from providers like myself, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share it around. I really appreciate you tuning in, and we've got a lot more videos in the pipeline right now. we got one hopefully coming out every week for the next couple months. So hang in there, keep the pressure up, keep your aim true.